As the world moves slowly but steadily towards meeting climate change goals, some farmers have spoken out about what those targets might mean for their livelihoods, as well as their cattle. Some in Ireland have suggested that thousands of cows are set to be culled to hit emissions targets over the next few years. Today, we are discussing concerns some Irish farmers are currently having, as they could be forced into mass culling. Stay with us. Let's get straight into it then. What's going on? Well, for anyone involved in the farming industry on the Emerald Isle, the government's plans to cut agriculture emissions by 25% provide pretty grim reading. Ireland's cattle population outnumbers its humans by about 2.5 million, and the people of the land have had a long and storied history with animals. However, these days, some people, mainly in government, believe cows are to blame for the worsening climate crisis. Ireland itself hasn't particularly been a shining example of a country which strives to cut emissions, and it is widely believed that they have even increased their emissions in recent times. The country's farms also produce 37.5% of national emissions, which is the highest in the EU. When you consider how small the country is in regard to other farming behemoths, this is a worrying statistic. Most of the emissions come from methane, basically cows passing wind, which means unfortunately the animal now has a target on its back. New government initiatives have outlined a plan to cut emissions within the industry by 25% by 2030, and they can count themselves lucky. Some other industries are being forced to reduce emissions by up to 50%. However, farmers are not happy. Head of the Irish Creamery Milk Suppliers Association, Pat McCormick, said, the mood is hugely frustrated. It's very hard to quantify, but there will be increased costs and reduced output. They also believe these targets will force some farms to close, whilst others will have to cull hundreds of thousands. Pretty grim indeed. So what else do we know about the issue? Stick around to find out. Of course, the Green Party, part of Ireland's coalition government, have come in for some heavy criticism from farmers' unions for forcing the issue, especially after the country's farmers had previously been encouraged to grow in order to exploit the EU's own milk quotas. Given the green light to go ahead and expand, which they did exponentially over the past decade, Irish farmers invested in top of the range equipment. This resulted in Irish butter and cheese being exported around the world, and business was good. McCormick went on to say, All the talk was of what dairy could deliver for the economy and society, and we did that in spades. Now, it's the bad boy. You can see where their frustrations lie. One particular farmer in Bally Highland, known as Scully, has suggested climate targets could be the end of his family's three-generation business. He revealed he had hoped his teenage son would be the fourth Scully to farm cows, but believes climate targets could negatively impact the farm's future. He said, It's all happening so quickly quickly and they're looking for results so fast. Sometimes you would be better moving slow and doing it right. Right now, the future seems bleak, but some farmers have hope. Some have suggested that a change in calculating methane emissions could be the way forward, whilst others have claimed investing in new technology to combat the climate crisis. Where do you guys stand on the issue? Are we really headed towards the great cull then? Let's see. One prominent climate change scientist, John Sweeney from Maynooth University, believes that the farmers calls for differing methods such as new technology and different ways of calculating methane emissions won't particularly work. He said, Various tried and untried methods have been advanced to suggest compliance with the 25% emission ceiling. Only reduction in numbers can achieve the targets in the short term. He has also suggested people should stop using words like cull, as it is unhelpful and only serves to inflame the rural population. However, there are others who say he can dress it up as much as he likes, but there is no getting around the fact that up to 1 million cows will be culled if Sweeney and other advocates get their way. He then suggested farmers should be grateful when comparing their industry to other sectors, saying, Agriculture has received a very generous emission ceiling, largely due to the powerful lobby groups it possesses. I mean, if he's happy to go for long periods without milk in his tea, then I guess there's nothing anyone can do, right? Another farmer, John Connell, had a different take to his fellow farmers, suggesting everyone needs to adapt in order to make sure this planet is habitable for future generations. Fair enough. What do you guys think of all this? So, will all this actually change anything? Stick around to find out. Well, given the fact that there are only 135,000 cattle farms in Ireland, some people have suggested that the problem is much, much bigger than a few four-legged friends in Ireland, and that is hard to disagree with when you look at some statistics around the world. China are by far and away the biggest culprits when it comes to climate and pollution. In 2020 alone, they pumped out 9.9 billion, with a B, tons of CO2 emissions. That was more than twice the second worst on the list, which was the United States with 4.4 billion. Next came India with 2.3 billion tons of CO2 emitted. So when you compare what these countries are doing with Ireland, then it's literally not even comparable. Some people have suggested that culling a million cows in Ireland is as useful as a chocolate teapot in the grand scheme of things. However, there are others who suggest that we as global citizens need to start somewhere. But Irish farmers are possibly right to feel aggrieved, as they will probably wonder why it has to start with them. Of course, it doesn't and it hasn't, but there is always pushback when new ideas come around. Whether or not the pushback is great enough to save these cows, or in fact the farms, we're not sure and only time will tell. What do you guys make of this one? Pointless or a good start? What did the Farmers Association have to say 
they did. Let's discuss. As you might imagine, they didn't react particularly well to the news. When the government revealed at the end of last month that they had committed to reducing greenhouse gases caused by agriculture by 25%, there was widespread outrage, as we have already pointed out. More broadly, the government revealed plans to slash greenhouse gases by 51% by 2030. When you take Ireland's poor performance where global climate goals are concerned, this seems like more hot air. Pardon the pun. Environment Minister and head of the Green Party in Ireland, Eamon Ryan, called the news hugely significant, but his sentiments were roundly criticized by the Farmers Association, whose head, Tim Cullinan, said, This is a potentially devastating blow for Irish farming and the rural economy. The Irish Creamery Milk Suppliers Association went one further, criticizing the deal by calling it a sellout. Many farmers had suggested the figure should be set at 22 percent, but the government compromised at 25 percent after other sectors claimed agriculture should face heavier cuts of around 30 percent. Some of these groups had claimed that agriculture in the country now only accounts for around 1% of Irish national income, but gives off a lot more when it comes to emissions. Which side of the debate do you guys land on? Give us your thoughts below. And finally, a case study from Holland. Last month, Dutch farmers protested over plans to reduce livestock numbers by 30%. People up and down the country turned the Dutch flag upside down in solidarity with the farmers, who took to blocking off distribution centers, whilst also blockading major road arteries in the lowlands. The Dutch people were outraged after a police fired a gun at the 16-year-old son of a farmer, who was part of protests after the government announced cuts in ammonia, nitrogen oxides, and nitrous oxide, which are all key components in the protection of nature reserves. One farmer in Zeewold said, This is not a democracy anymore, it's a dictatorship. Dutch farmers have aired similar grievances to those heard in Ireland recently, but with the seventh biggest livestock population in the EU, their concerns are arguably reverberating a little louder, given how small the country is. It has been suggested that upwards of 100 million cattle will need to be culled to hit targets, which will seriously impact the country, given the fact that it has the highest livestock density in Europe. Another farmer claims that the industry is being targeted unfairly, saying, if you come for us and our families, you come at a farmer's soul. We've proposed all kinds of solutions, but we are ignored. And finally, they come up with a plan for a reduction in livestock. No other sector has reduced nitrogen in the last 30 years as much as we have. What do you guys make of the similarities? As usual, thanks for dropping in on us today, and remember to tune in again next time when we will be discussing all sorts of other interesting bits and pieces. And why not do us a big favor by liking, sharing, and subscribing to our channel. Bye guys!